Uh, anybody for tennis? Yes. Anybody for tennis? Um, I haven't played tennis for a very long time. This is not mine. I think this is yours, Tim, right? I haven't played tennis for a while, but I really do like tennis, and uh, I really hope Andy and Murray does win today. And uh, let's all, uh, well, maybe not pray about it, but at least let's wish him. <laughs> wish him a good thoughts and, uh, and victory um, in Jesus. No, I mean, in, um, for him. So, uh, if you've got a Bible with you, turn to Luke chapter 11, and uh, I've got a couple of things I'd love to share with you. Uh, ever so briefly, but I hope ever so meaningfully. So, let's go to Luke chapter 11, and I'll unlock my iPad. Oh, there we go. Good. Now, i got a quick quiz for uh, any of us who wish to participate, and there are prizes for this quiz. Are you, do you want some prizes? Yay! Excellent. Very one surprise. All right, depends if you get the right answer. Now, I have some questions about Wimbledon and about tennis. And if you get them right, you can either have a tennis ball or you can have a chocolate. You've got a choice. I, I sense more zeal for chocolate. But, you know, you've, you've got a choice. Okay, so chocolate or tennis ball is your choice. Uh, and our, this is our just first hand up, first shout out, and then uh, we'll see who gets, uh, gets what they uh, want. Let's put that down there. All right, who is last year's men's champion? Djokovic. Chocolate or, bo or tennis ball? No, 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 it's over there. Uh, chocolate, chocolate? <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm, I'm out of practice. Last year's women's champion. Okay, Serena Williams, somewhere over there in the tent. Chocolate or tennis ball? Chocolate. Okay. All right. Well done. Okay. Okay, a harder one. The loudest grunt. Who's the loudest grunter at Wimbledon? Sharapova is correct. 101.2 decibels. If you were standing next to her, it'd be like standing next to a, mo a motorbike at like full throttle. Okay, chocolate or tennis ball? Tennis ball. Excellent. JP's got the reflexes. Excellent. Okay, what is unique about Wimbledon compared to the other Grand Slams? Grass. Grass. You've already answered. Who else said grass? Grass? Grass over there. Chocolate or tennis ball? Chocolate. Oh. Sorry about that. The wind took it. Pass, it. pass it over there. Pass it over there. Be righteous. Anybody know who is served the fastest ever serve at Wimbledon for the men? Not Sam Brusick. Not even Isovic. No, no shtick. I'm not hearing it yet. Hey, hey, a person like Tito should know because the name, surname sounds a bit like something he does. Dent. Taylor Dent. Correct. 148 miles an hour. Chocolate or tennis ball? Chocolate it is. Right. Fudge coming your way. Sorry. Sorry about that. All right. What's the name of the women's trophy? No, it is a plate, but it has a name. No, not getting that one. Moving on. It's the rose water dish. How do they keep the pigeons away? A hawk. Does anybody know the name of the hawk? It's called Rufus. Rufus the hawk. Okay, I think my wife got that one right. She gets a chocolate. Um, in fact, because she's my wife, she gets two. Or maybe, maybe one of them's really for me. Um, who played the longest ever match? Isner. Who said Isner? 
He's not. Chocolate or tennis ball? Chocolate every time. Okay. There we go. Like that. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. Sorry. Uh, please pass that on. Yes, Isna and uh, Nicholas Mahut uh, spread over three days. How many hours? Anybody know? Eleven. One. Eleven hours. Who was that? You've already answered. Right. Eleven. Oh, who said eleven? Oh, a young child said eleven. Okay. Oh, sorry. All right. Okay. And uh, one more, one more, one more. One more. I've got so many here. Let's see. Why don't we go with... If you... Okay. Roughly. If you laid all the strawberries end to end that are sold during Wimbledon fortnight, which is 23 tons, if you laid them end to end... How far do you think they would r reach? Let's have, let's have a, a, a few people give some guesses here. How far would they go in terms of miles? Yeah? To the moon. To the moon. All right, what else? Any other guesses, yes? Four miles. Four miles. At the back there. Strawberry fields. Strawberry fields forever. Yeah. At the back there. I can't hear. Seven miles. Ten miles. Eight miles. Ten thousand miles. Ten thousand miles and then forever more. Yeah, okay. Uh, and uh, where's my, my notes here? Okay, mm, we're not really getting it right here yet. Fifty is closer. Okay, I'm going to give it to fifty because that's nearest. You said fifty. You already had a chocolate. All right, so I'm going to... Did you think fifty? You thought fifty, didn't you? Did you think 50? You did. You, you, good. Okay. Chocolate then. Would anybody like a tennis ball? Yeah. Okay. One over there. Who threw that chocolate at me? Okay. More tennis balls. Anybody who can get it. Mind your head. Just a few more. They're all gone. One there. One there. One there. One there. That's it. All, all gone. Now, two of those have chocolates inside them. If you want to have a look. Never mind. Right, now that I've ruined someone's teeth and Tidu can have some more business. Um, okay, back to the Bible. Do you know, tennis is actually a tough game. If you play tennis, you'll, put, you'll burn about 500 calories an hour, which is, which is up there with basketball. When I was 23, a young man came to church and he was interested in studying the Bible. He was 13 years old. And I, I played a bit of tennis at school. I was, I was decent, not great, but I was okay. I could handle myself on the tennis court. So I thought, I, did, I found out that this chap was a tennis player, 13 years old. It turns out, his name was Jean. Turns out that he was the eighth best 13 year old in France. I thought, the eighth best 13 year old in France, I'm 23. I think I can handle myself. How good can he be? So just to build a bit of a relationship, we went out to the tennis courts in West London and uh, we, we played tennis. Or more accurately, I should say, he played tennis. I picked the ball up. A lot. We played one set. It was six love. Every game was 40 love to him. I don't think I even touched the ball with my tennis racket for an entire set, which took about... 15 minutes to complete at the most. It was incredibly humbling to be beaten by a 13-year-old French teenager. <laughs> Some things are harder in life than you expect, aren't they? You get the idea that life should be 
easy sometimes when you just grow up in life you just flow and it should be okay and and I'll, I'll get a great job and I'll have good health and I'll marry the right person and we'll have kids that everybody else will envy they'll say how handsome and beautiful your children are how intelligent how amazing and our grand and the, our parents the grandparents would be like we are so proud of you having such wonderful grandchildren to carry on the legacy of our of our family name for generations to come and we think life's going to be, we hope life will be smooth and easy and then and then someone something happens it's like a, it's like an unexpected lob or a really hard smash that not only beats us but hits us very painfully life's not always as easy as we think and then we wonder what it's really all about and I think it's at those times that those are the times when God has a window into our lives has that potentially that open door at least if we will open the door and say, I had hoped life was like, going to be like this, but it's turned out like this. Why, God? Why? Why is it like this? And it's at times like that, that a passage such as Luke 11, I think, can really help us. Let's read it and think about it just for a moment, and then we'll be done. Luke 11. It says this. I'll pick it up in, uh, Jesus is teaching a lot of things here about prayer and about the relationship with God, but I think we'll pick it up here in verse 9. What does Jesus say here? Luke 11 verse 9, so I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. To, uh, who re receives. The one who seeks, finds. And the one, to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, and I think this applies to mothers as well, by the way. So, which of you fathers, if your son or daughter asks for a fish, will give him a snake? I don't think we're barbecuing snake today. Are we not barbecuing snake? It's not on the menu. Okay, all right. You're not going to get a snake. If you ask, if he asks for an egg, we'll give him a scorpion. That's not going to happen. If you then... Though you are evil, let's face it, we do have our moments. If you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And in that context, I think he's talking about what it means to have a real vital, uh, 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 intentional relationship with God where we know we're connected with him. We need that in our lives. We get, we get knocked around. We get surprised. We get disappointed. And we need it. God's given us some rules to help us. Those rules, if you like, are in the Bible. Much like the game of tennis isn't meaningful unless there are tram lines, unless there's a net, it doesn't make sense. So in our lives, if we don't learn how to play the game of life according to God's rules, life doesn't make sense. I think sometimes God is a bit like the umpire in tennis, sitting up on his chair above everything else. He's able to see more clearly, or she's able to see more clearly, than the players themselves can, what's really going on. We need to look up to that umpire, if you like, and say, God, help us to understand how to play this game of life better than I can without you. That's what we need. God has a good plan. He has a good plan for our lives to make something better out of our lives than we could ourselves. You know, this tennis racket, where did I put it? This tennis racket, I don't know how much you paid for it, Tim. Not much. Not much, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, but in my hands, this tennis racket is worth almost nothing. Put this tennis racket into Serena Williams' hands, or Andy Murray's hands, and it's worth millions. It's a bit like that with God. Our lives in only our own hands, not that much value. Our lives in the hands of God, unimaginable value. He's our Father. He wants to connect with you. Maybe that's why He brought you here today. Maybe it's to, to, to take a moment to think about where your life is going and let God come into your life and take over. And help you enjoy the game of life the way it's meant to be. Let's pray together. Father, we want to thank you so much for bringing us here today. And for the uh, singing and be able to take the communion and think about our lives. And we thank you for our friendships that we were able to share together here. And thank you for the food that's coming soon as well. God, you're very kind to us. 
Help us to respond to that kindness in the right way and to let you be our spiritual umpire. Be the one who, who gives value and meaning to our lives. Strengthen us, Father. Strengthen us according to your provision and your strengthening and, and the way that you feed us spiritually. And help us to open our hearts and minds so that the door will be open and we will seek as we find. And we will find as we seek. And we thank you for Jesus who makes all of this possible. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.